In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you how to create a survey or form for free with JotForm, whether you need to collect data for work, need to take payments for school, or have to create any sort of form in between, JotForm is a versatile online form builder that you can use to create any type of form. I use JotForm to create all of my forms because there's nothing that it can't do. Whether I want a form that can take payments, be available on mobile through a QR code, or have integrations with Zoom or Calendar, you know, JotForm has everything. And in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you exactly how you can create your own custom form and share it with whoever you need. Now, if you guys wanna see more videos like this, be sure to hit that like button down below. And with that being said, let's get started. Now we're going to be creating a form from scratch, but I'll also be showing you how you can use one of their thousands of templates to create your forms. So the first thing you wanna do is go on jotform.com and I'll link it down below. And you wanna sign up for an account. So once you've created an account and logged in, you're going to be taken to the homepage. And here you're going to see all of your forms. We don't have any yet because we haven't made any on this account. And now along the top, we're going to see the forms we can access as well as templates. And they have a ton of different templates you can use. You can also see all of your integrations. So whether you wanna collect payments through PayPal, have your forms export to Google Sheets, or have Zoom links, there's a you know over 100 integrations that you can use with JobForm. You can also see all the different features that JobForm has, have support, as well as access to their pricing. And what's great with JobForm is that you can create five forms that each take 100 inputs for absolutely free. Now along the left hand side, we're going to be able to create our form as well as organize our forms through folders, as well as see folders people have shared with us so you can easily collaborate, as well as see your drafts, favorites, and of course the archive. So the first thing we're going to do is create our own form. And all you wanna do is click on the create form button. And we're going to start from scratch and you have two different options for the form layout. You can either make a classic form so your entire form is on one page and you basically scroll through or you can do a card form where each question is on its own page in the shape of a card and you can flip through it. So we're going to be creating a classic form and this form is going to be for a YouTube slash creator meetup event that I'm going to be doing. This event is not real, but for, these, for the purpose of this video, that's going to be the form uh, purpose. So the first thing we're going to do is upload a logo and I'm going to upload this Z that I have and put my organization name and then click on save and now our form is going to be made. So now we're in the main form builder page, which we can see because it says build here, but we also have the option to go into the settings and publish our page later on. And along the top, you can also add different collaborators by either sharing the link or by adding separate users by their email. And so we're not going to be collaborating right now. We're just going to be customizing this form. And in terms of customizing this form, there's two areas where you can basically edit and customize. On the left-hand side, once you click over here, you can add a bunch of different elements all the way from your name and your email to things such as a calendar selection, multiple choice, or a rating scale. Now, if you wanna have actual designs, you can click on this paint button over here to access the form designer where you can see your styles, your themes, and your layouts. But first, we're going to add some basic you know, some basic elements in our widgets, and then we're going to start customizing our form. So the first thing I'm going to do is just change the title. And so to edit elements within JotForm, all you have to do is click on them and the box will appear. So here I'm going to do, you know, 2022 creator meetup because that's what this form is going to be about. So now we're ready to add some elements to our form. And the first element we're going to be adding is just going to be the name field. So we wanna just go here, go into full name. And to add an element, you just have to drag and drop it. And of course you can change the different text elements just by clicking on it. So it's very intuitive, but this looks good to me. We're also going to add a area for people to put their channel link. So I'm going to go ahead and go into short text here. And once again, just drag and drop it. And here I can type in, you know, enter your channel URL. And once you add different elements and you click on them, what you can also see is with these different dots over here, you can click on them and drag to move around the fields. Now, if you wanna delete a field, you can click on the trash can. And if you wanna edit the properties, you can click on the settings. And here what you can do is you can do general settings. So you can you know, change the alignment. So we're going to keep everything top aligned and you can also add other you know, options and advanced settings as well. But for the channel URL, you know, this field is fine. 
So next we're going to give people the chance to put in their birthday because we want only people 18 and up coming to this event. And so one way we can do this is by going into the date picker over here. And once again, we can just drag it. And here we can put enter your birth date. We can just put birthday like so. And what one thing we wanna do is we wanna make sure people under the age of 18 can't sign up. And so to do this, I can go into properties and I can actually go ahead and go into limits and turn on age verification and make the minimum age 18 like so. So job form is very intuitive where, you know, all of these different fields have the settings required so you can easily, you know, play around with them. Now at this creator event, I'm also going to be having different speakers come in. So I wanna know who's going to be actually coming to watch the speakers and which speakers are going to be here for. So one thing I can do is I can actually have a multiple choice option and drag it down here. And I'll ask, you know, will you be attending the speaker series? And I only wanna have two options. So I'm going to go ahead and just hover over these two options and delete them and then type in yes or no. And we can add, actually we don't need another option. So this is good. And then I'm also going to add a drop down so that I can find out which speaker everyone is the most interested in. And so I can go over here in the drop down and be, say, you know, which speaker are you most excited about? And I can go and edit the options and, you know, do speaker A, speaker B, or speaker C. And later on, we're going to add some conditional logic. So only the people that say that, that are attending the speaker series will be able to see this question, which is great because if you're not attending the speaker series, you don't need to answer this question. So now the survey is looking pretty much complete. The only other thing that really matters to me is, you know, making sure that everyone has their questions answered. So I'm going to add some long text and just ask, you know, do you have any questions? And that looks good to me. Now, the next thing we're going to do is make some of these questions mandatory to fill out. So I'm gonna go into full name, go into properties, and then over here where it says required, I'm going to check it on. I'm going to do the same thing for the channel URL and just turn that on. Same thing for the birthday, that's already on. And then the speaker series question, I will also have it be mandatory like so, but the rest of them can be optional. So these questions look good to me. Now, I'm also going to go ahead and add some widgets. Now, if we were you know, serving food, we could go ahead and add payment integration and it's the same thing, you just drag and drop it, but we don't have any sort of payment. Instead, we're going to be using widgets. And I'm actually going to be using the YouTube widget because I created a trailer for this event that I want people to see. And so all we have to do is drag the widget and here we can put in the URL of the video. And I'm going to call this, you know, the creator meetup trailer. I don't actually have a trailer, but this is how we would add one. And similarly, you can add a ton of other widgets as well. If you're interested, things such as review before submit, terms and conditions, e-signature, and you know, much, much more. But I think content wise, we have everything we need. Now I'm just going to go ahead and go into the form designer and change the color scheme. So I think that we're going to make this, you know, dark themed so we can change the different colors here. Now, if we wanted to, we can also go ahead and edit the styles and add custom CSS, but that is out of my ballpark. And if we wanted to add a theme, we can also do it after we've created this custom form. So for example, I can use this colorful theme and you know, that looks pretty good. looks like an event form. And then in layout, we can keep it in classic form because we don't want to change it to card form. And once the form looks good, you can turn on the preview form button over here to see a quick preview. And so this is what it'll look like. And I'm pretty happy with that. So once this looks good, we're going to go ahead and go into the settings tab. And here we're going to add some conditional logic. So to add conditional logic, we just wanna go into conditions. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to go into the show hide field condition. And basically what we wanna do is program it so that people can only choose their favorite speaker if they're going to the speaker event. So for example, you know, if will you be attending the speaker series is equal to yes, do show which speaker are you most excited about? And I click save and that condition is added. No coding required, it's as easy as that. 
So those are all the conditions we want for this form. We can also go ahead and double check the other settings. So we can make sure, you know, our title is what we want and the form is enabled. We can also have it be disabled on a certain date if that's something we want or disabled when there's a certain amount of submissions. In the email tab, you can choose which email you want the results sent to. The thank you page is the final page that people will get once they fill out the form. And of course you can customize it, but there's also a great default thank you page. You can also redirect to another link. So for example, if I wanted people to go to my YouTube channel after I could do that. You also have the option to integrate your form with a bunch of other applications. So for example, if I wanted to have the results and go to a spreadsheet, I can click on Google Sheets and I can click on Authenticate. And once I go through the process here, I'll have the chance to you know, create a new spreadsheet and have everything be exported like so, which is super dope. We can also add approval flows. So it's approval flows are basically, you know, if you have a ton of different forms and you wanna add not only just conditional logic, but also have, you know, approvals, have different things be populated to reports and do a lot of advanced stuff. Jarform has the capabilities for you to create different approval flows. And then finally, you can set up notifications for this form. Um, so if you wanna receive, you know, mobile notifications, you can go ahead and turn them on and you can set it so that you, every time someone, you know, gives you a new submission, it'll tell you that form has a new submission. And once everything here looks good, you can go ahead and go into publish. And there's a ton of ways you can publish the form. So the easiest one is just sharing a link, but you can also go ahead and choose different ways to share your form. So for example, you can invite people through email, you can go into share options, and you can share on different social media platforms. The coolest one is the option to also have a QR code. You also have the option to embed your form onto a web page you know, assign your form to other users, as well as download a fillable PDF or, or, you know, just publish it to a third party if you have a blog. But we're just going to be, you know, publishing this to our YouTube channel. So the link is more than enough. And, you know, once we have this link, we're good to go. So that is how you create a form with JotForm. I hope this video is helpful because I think I went through all of the different features and hopefully by now you know how you can create your own custom forms with JotForm. But that's about it. If you guys did like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. And as always, thanks for watching. My name is Iovo and I'm signing out.